Here we go, here we go, here we go! To celebrate the big man's 75th anniversary, Superman, for lack of a better word, returns to the big screen! Before I go see the Superman reboot, which simply looks divine, I thought I'd make a quick video about all the other big theatrical releases that I've seen. Yeah, 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 never saw the serials or the Mole Men movie. Bite me. The original Superman film, back in 1978, is widely considered to be one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Even on Rotten Tomatoes, it scores in the same league as heavyweights like Spider-Man 2, Dark Knight, and Avengers. But me... I know I'm in the minority here, but not only do I think that it hasn't stood the test of time well, I, I, I think it was kind of a cheesy movie to begin with. What dragged it down for me is how, well, the whole movie seems to drag. There are long stretches that feel really slow, and when the lively bits come, there's just not that much payoff for me. In most superhero origin films, there's usually plenty of good stuff to keep me interested until about an hour in when the hero dons the costume. Spider-Man, Batman Begins, Iron Man, and hey, even Green Lantern did this for me. But Superman just seemed to plot along, and even parts with Superman finally doing his thing seemed drawn out, like flying with Lois Lane, the missile chase, and clean up from the San Andreas aftershocks. Another thing I really loathed was Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. The man is a brilliant actor, but what he was given for Luthor was an insult to his acting prowess. This Luther comes off as a pompous clown, and though arrogance is typically the downfall of most comic book villains, here it's just taken to the extreme. Then there's some stupid shit that still makes me cringe. Luther figuring out the kryptonite just, just felt like it came out of his ass. And don't get me started on that reverse rotation, reverse time bullshit. What did I like? Well, Christopher Leaf truly nails the look of Superman, and in that department, no one will ever surpass him. Though he seems a foppish boy scout most of the time, there are moments of pathos, like when he hoists up Lois's car to find her dead inside. Timeless acting there. Most of the supporting cast do their jobs well, and the effects were good for their time and can hold up today if you allow yourself the right mindset. Overall, it's not a bad movie, just one that has a lot of niggles that bogged it down for me. But, oh man, what a reversal for the sequel! We've seen sequels that trump the original, like Spidey 2 and Dark Knight, but Superman 2 just crushes its predecessor, in my eyes. Again, there's a lot of slow build-up to the inevitable clash with General Zod, but this time, it didn't drag at all, and the payoff? Holy shit. The reason I refuse to hate on Spider-Man 3 and Iron Man 2 is because the build-up to the final act was so perfectly orchestrated, Everything came together. Superman 2 was the same way. The fight throughout Metropolis between Superman and the Kryptonian criminals, ugh, it still ranks among my favorite comic book movie action scenes. Just as important is the greater emotional depth. Superman didn't seem too deep a character in the last one, despite all the things going on. Here, I sense genuine conflict that had nothing to do with fighting the bad guy. And when you finally throw in Zod, played perfectly by Terrence Stamp, it does wonders. I doubt Zod and the Man of Steel can equal the awesomeness beheld here. For example, his insouciance when being told about how a news broadcast can be seen by everyone on Houston, just the way he just carries himself, you may continue. That sort of subtlety in an actor is a rare gift. You could take out all the kneel before Zod stuff, and Terrence Stan would still kick ass. As for which cut I prefer, uh, I dunno. There's things I like about the original, like the Eiffel Tower scene and Ursa arm-wrestling that guy, yet there's things in the Donner Cut that are clearly superior. Maybe one day I'll finally splice together my ideal version. I don't know. But alas, as high as a second act race Superman, the third brought him to his lowest point. Let me say this now. Superman 3 is the comic book film I hate the most, and it's one of my most hated films ever. Yes, I hate it more than Blade Trinity, Ninja Turtles 3, Daredevil, and 2003 Hulk. I haven't watched other hated films like Batman and Robin, Steel, and Howard the Duck beginning to end, but I've caught snippets on TV. Yes, they look goony, but when I caught bits and pieces, I got the sense that things were going somewhere. The filmmakers knew where they wanted to go, and though the route forwards was flawed, I felt they would get there. 
Superman 3, though, is, is just a mess. My frontal lobe may shut down if I think too deeply about how much of a mess it is. Even things that were actually... Or, uh, could have been interesting, like the junkyard fight between the good and bad Superman, have now been done way better. Like Peter Parker removing the alien symbiote in Spidey 3, or Bruce Wayne's inner struggles in Dark Knight Rises. Uh, honestly, guys, I seriously can't talk about this one anymore without running the risk of having a goddamn stroke. But then there's the one everyone insists is the worst of the bunch. Except me. I know, I'm in the minority again, but I consider Superman 4 to be... WATCHABLE! It's not just when I compare it to Superman 3, too. Again, here's a movie that at least knows what it wants to do and has a plan to get there, however flawed. Those moments where Superman seems to be wrestling with himself add a bit of emotional depth that, while nowhere near as poignant as in Superman 2, at least provides something and makes me feel some effort was put in this thing. I can't really complain about the effects, except for that one bit with reflying that gets recycled too damn often. The plot is a tad preachy, but again, at least there's actually a plot this go-round. And oddly enough, this is the only time I can dig Hackman's take on Luthor. When he and Superman meet again, I really got that sense that these two have played cat and mouse for years, and the banter back and forth between Reeve and Hackman, it was my favorite in the series, believe it or not. Little things like this stick in my mind, and I just can't submit to the group think and call Superman 4 a total clusterfuck. But there's no question that the fourth act could not save the franchise. Oh, hell no. I mean, I thought Shrek Forever After made up for Shrek the Third, but here's the thing. Shrek 4 was a legitimately good movie, while Shrek 3 was just... eh. Superman 4 had a so-bad-it's-good vibe, while its predecessor was just mind-rot. So 19 years later, we have Superman Returns. It ignores 3 and 4, and again, though I have a soft spot for 4, I'll gladly sacrifice it if it means erasing the abomination that was 3. <laughs> This one gets a lot of hate, too, which I find ironic. It gets slammed for being more or less a straight-up remake of the original, and <coughs> excuse me, instead of a true follow-up. Yet amazingly, I love it because of that. Returns does everything the original set out to do, yet fixes everything I hated about its revered originator. The bits in between the action don't feel drawn out and actually keep me interested. Kevin Spacey is a far superior Lex Luthor, and Superman himself exhibits just as much emotional depth as he did in Superman 2. Certain scenes, such as the bits with Superman in the hospital, and TV broadcasts showing all the do-gooding soups has been zipping around to do, really pack a punch in my eyes. All in all, this doesn't deserve all the hate it gets. I'm sad to say I never saw in theaters. Come to think of it, the only DC films I've seen in theaters thus far are Green Lantern, twice, and Nolan's last two Batman films. I'll be seeing Man of Steel sometimes next week. I'll catch a matinee showing and hopefully be just as impressed. Critics are ripping on it already, but again, I love Superman Returns. And I even found some good in Superman 4, so <laughs> I'm not worried. And though I'll always lament not seeing Christian Bale and Ryan Reynolds together in a Justice League film, what I've seen of Henry Cavill makes me think Warner Brothers found the perfect modern-day Superman. I'll have a review next week, hopefully. So until then, here's my scores for the other five Superman films. Nitpicking and flaming may now commence.